Welcome to episode three of Turbos and Tubs of our 68B Valiant U build. This episode, we're starting here in Tom's shed. I'll actually duck around to his work, about 15 minutes away from here, and we'll uh, bend up and um, cut up and bend up those uh, chassis connectors that we spoke about last episode. So this episode, we'll focus on putting them in. And, um, and that. we're also going to get into the original chassis connectors or rails as such, the cross members. We're going to get inside those, we're going to rust convert them, we're going to wire wheel them first and then rust convert them. Um, and then give them a good hit of um, some black rust sealer, just to make sure they're sweet for another 50 years. Also this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to actually plate the inside of the seal. So we're going to put connectors back from our chassis connectors back to our seal just to tie and sort of triangulate the car a little bit more. Being a unibody structure, we want to get a fair bit of rigidity in the vehicle. Um, so we'll go through on how to prep those. We'll ru obviously rust convert the original sill first, and then we'll probably prime the sill Put and prime, wood prime wood. the inside of the, the, the sill plate. We'll use a copper weld through primer. So you guys can probably get this off the shelf at sort of more of your industrial suppliers. Uh, we have a couple of places here local that will stock that. Um, it doesn't matter what brand, as long as it's a copper weld through primer, that'll really seal it up and uh, do your wonders when you're welding. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So we want to put a flat floor pan in this, preferably as for as long as we can. What I'm doing here is just seeing how different the levels are from front to rear of the car, because we're going to put that top hat section in to strengthen it up as a chassis stiffener. So looking at this, it's pretty well level. It's it's marginally out. We're talking probably five to eight mil over a meter, which is not really going to be too much of a drama for us. So we're probably going to fold these top hats in one piece and probably keep them at the same height and the same depth the whole way through. Alrighty. So before we head off around to Tom's workshop to fold up the uh, chassis connectors, just going to do a bit of a quick tech tip for bend allowances or bend deductions. So as both sheet metal workers, this is a daily occurrence. For us, we need to fold up a channel, fold up a top hat section to stiffen something, or fold up an angle. As sheeties, we generally work to about 0.2 mil of a tolerance uh, over a meter. So before we start, we've actually measured the rail. So first thing we'll go over is measurement types used. So up here, our 15 mil is outside, outside. What that means is it's outside of the channel to the outside of the flange. The next one down is 46 mil, but it's an inside to outside. So it's one material thickness off up here and to the outside here. So if that was an outside, outside measurement, we're gonna do these out of three mil, that would actually be 49. Bottom 73 is outside, outside. Just drawing red pen, exactly what we want to achieve with our channel. So what we want to make is sleeves inside. Just like that. So our red drawing there, or a red line, is our profile that we'd like to achieve. Common mistake that's made with folding metal is people will just add all these numbers together and they think that that's their cut size. On outside measurement, for every outside measurement of a 90 degree fold, it's gonna take away two material thicknesses. So going away from this, we'll just go to a quick 50 mil angle. So if we were to make an angle, 90 degree angle, so we want 50, 50, outside to outside. Most people would think the cut length would be 100. 100, if we fold that at 103 mil, this number here, if we fold that directly center, our number here will be 53, and our flange here will be 53. It actually grows a material thickness each direction. So we'll add our 50s together, gives us 100. So we've got one fold, so it's two material thicknesses, minus six mil, 
gives us a cut length of 94 mil. So if we get that at 94 mil, we want a 50-50 angle. We then mark it out and our inside measurement would be 47 mil. And that's where we'd fold to create a 50-50 angle. It's gonna go three mil one way, three mil the other, giving us a 50-50 outside. I hope that helps. Um, we'll try and do a few more tech tips as we go through the video. I think next episode we're gonna start into some welding. So we might talk about helmet selection. Um, then we'll go into welders, types of welders and stuff like that as well. Just to give you guys at home a better understanding of what we do day in, day out and what's required to keep yourself safe. So I've got a bit ahead of ourselves here. I've actually already made up this, the driver's side chassis rail connector. I've actually notched it to finish flush with the existing cross member. And I've folded it down here so it actually lands flat in like this so we can actually fully weld the perimeter and get it in there nice. On the back, it's notched around to clear the rear rail and it just slides in beside it. There's actually a, there's actually a fuel line that bolts in about here so that now clears it. Same thing again, this will all get fully welded and we can actually get into a hole on the inside of the rail and plug it in there. So now I've done that one, I've actually already marked up the passenger side one and we're going to get it cut up and fit in now. this return in the front was going to be proving to be a little bit difficult in the pan brake. So another method we know of is literally just using your bench vise. All we've done is just clamped it in pretty close to where we want to fold it and all I'm going to do is hold onto it and go like that. And there we go. Nice car out. Yeah. I must say as you know, I'm not really a big fan of big diameter wheels, but it kind of works for this car, you know? Do yeah. you find that as well? Yeah, I yes. yeah. Alrighty, so we've just been unfolded the uh, top hat sections for the chassis connectors. Um, cheers to Tom for hooking that up. Tom has also done a bit more cleaning up on the inside, sort of removed the seat rails, uh, a bit of a wire wheel. 
Just went down to Bunnings and got an assortment of wire wheels just to get in between the rails, um, get as much out as we can. It's pretty good metal, so rust converter is probably not required. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to use a weld through copper primer. So we picked this up from a body shop. It's like 25 bucks a can, but it's, it's copper based. So it's still conductive. It doesn't react with the weld. Um, it's really nice stuff to use. So we're going to do copper primer on the inside. We've got some sill plates to weld in. So some three mil plates because we're going to tie back to the sill. Um, copper prime all through here. But before we do that, what we're going to use is a wax and grease remover. So we've just picked that up from Bunnings. Um, pretty readily available. Just removes any grease, wax, and just preps the surface just so the paint adheres just that little bit better. So we'll get in and do that now and uh, keep going. Alrighty, so we've got our sill plates just tacked in, tacked every 50 mil. We'll just stitch between every second one. So I'll do that while Tom works on the tail shaft loop. So we got our rail connectors mocked in there. What we've done, just punched a hole saw through here. So we've done a bit of pre-planning, as we mentioned before, we're gonna run our tail shaft loop. Um, we do wanna race the car. Andrew requires anything quicker than a 13, I know we're being ambitious, but anything quicker than a 13 to have a tail shaft loop, uh, 150 mil back, within 150 mil from that front universal joint, 150 mil back here. So essentially what we've done, planned ahead, we'll roll our tunnel to suit, our tail shaft loop, and we'll run our exhaust down the side. So punch the hole saw, so we're gonna pass the tube all the way through, and we're actually gonna weld it to the inside of the connector, as well as inside and outside here. It should be pretty strong, should do what we need it to do.
Alrighty, so you put this on time lapse or fucking. Alright, cinematic. So. Cinematic, that's the fucking film. Alrighty, so this is our tail sharp loop. So we've just taken 30mm out of both. So just put one together 60mm. Suit that tunnel that we're going to roll a little bit better. So just put a little bit of V prep on there. Not too much, it doesn't need shitloads. Um, and a ticket together. So what I'll do is just tack it, roll it over, tack the other side. Then I'll weld it. Um, it's like 2.3, 3 mil wall, uh, and we're at 110 amp, which is, should be more than sufficient. Turn that back on. One piece of advice I will give is practice makes perfect, obviously. Um, I haven't practiced in a while, but it still looks pretty good. Um, don't pull the trigger. Don't start welding unless you're comfortable. There's no point even trying to complete a weld if, you, if your hand position is not comfortable or if you can't make it all the way around or do the amount of weld that you'd like to do. That's that.